So I just got done playing a couple of hours of Dead Cells on Steam. And it's a pretty good game. I like it because it's a, it's a roguelike. So when you die, you lose most of your stuff. Uh, you do have, you can do collect the things called Dead Cells that some enemies drop. And then when you get to the end of a level, you can spend those Dead Cells to, to permanently increase the power of weapons or your health flask which is a, which gives you your health back or is upgrade the ability to keep some of your money when you, after you die and normally in these roguelikes they they make the game full of uh bubble up and so you die a lot and very easily from everything and this one uh they don't do that uh, the first thing is that the controls actually work correctly. Uh, when you hit right, it immediately goes right, and left goes left. And you attack and attacks, and it doesn't have some dumb lag behind uh, every button press. Uh, enemies are stunned when you hit them. Uh, some, some enemies can hit through the stun. Uh, some enemies get stuck in the stun. You can touch enemies without them immediately hurting you. They have to attack you. I'm sure there's an enemy somewhere where if you touch it, it hurts you. Actually, I think there is. There's like a bird things that'll do it. You've got a roll. If you played Dark Souls, it's the same type of thing. When you're rolling, you usually can't be hurt. There are some things that can hurt you, like an area of an effect grenade thing that some monsters throw at you. Uh, the hitbox on your character is very generous. Because there, there are spikes in a couple of areas. They're not all over the place. And my character's head has gone through the spikes, but it didn't count as a hit. So that's pretty nice. And I like that because a lot of times when they put spikes in a game, it's always a thing saying, here, this is going to instantly kill you. And here, even if you do hit it, it doesn't instantly kill you. So that's nice. There's a level with, as far as I know, bottomless pits in it. Oh, they're easy to avoid. I haven't jumped down one to see if it really is a bottomless pit. The map makes it look like a bottomless pit. I bet there's a secret at the bottom of one of those bottomless pits, but who knows. Now these maps are partially procedurally generated a lot of them a lot of the times when you go through it again it looks very very similar which is on purpose uh, and I just I just really like it it was re really fun I got uh, I got pretty far on like my second or third playthrough you got lots of gold and dead cells to upgrade my stuff and it uh, looks pretty neat too your character person doesn't have a head, they just have a glowing thing in place of their head. So that's pretty nice. There was this knight guy who kept talking to me at the start of the game, and now he's gone. I don't know where he is. I'm pretty sure I found his dead body, and they gave me some stuff, some blueprints for new weapons, and some gold. And I, but I keep finding his dead body all over the place, so maybe it's not the same guy. I just wonder where it ran off to. So if you're if you're looking for a fun game, try out Dead Cells. Normally, I don't like those games because they're always full of uh, crap and stupid stuff that make you die instantly all the time. Like I didn't like Rogue Legacy because I was way too hard, and the and your player character just seemed to have an uh, just a very tiny amount of lag when you wanted to do something. It's almost imperceptible. It just seemed like the player character had that, and it was just so annoying to do anything in that game. But in Dead Cells, I was just, I never found myself screaming at the game. Because it's a fun game. Usually I scream at bad games. And then my cat comes in and meows at me. Alright, maybe I'll go, I think I'll go play that game some more. Goodbye.